All right, <clears throat> in my last video, I had talked about the several different version issues that I was having with this car. And the issue that I was having, or another issue that I was having with this car, is I was having a no start issue. And there's a bit of confusion when people say, my car doesn't start. And it's this confusion which can lead mechanics to a wild goose chase or not understanding specifically what is going on. When you say no start, why is it not starting? What is it doing that's not causing a no start? Because <clears throat> there is a big difference if you use the word no crank or no start. No crank means if you were to get in the car, turn the key over, nothing happens. It's completely dead, doesn't turn over, doesn't do nothing, where no start can imply that it's cranking, but it's not starting. And if that's the case, then that can be something like, you know, a bad fuel pump, out of fuel, whatever it is. But when it's a no crank, that becomes a bigger issue. And on this car, the issue that I was having is that it was not cranking. And so by it not cranking, I got up in the morning to go to work. I got in the car. Now, mind you, uh, the day before, and three months prior, I drove this car around without a problem. And of driving it around, there was never an issue. Then all of a sudden, one day I get into the car, it doesn't crank. Why isn't it cranking? Well, most people are going to assume if it's not cranking, it's a battery issue. So, got my multimeter out, checked the terminals, 12.4, 12.5 volts, whatever it was. So I knew the battery was good. Now, that doesn't mean that the battery is good in the sense it's gonna have enough to crank the vehicle over, but the battery is good enough that at 12 and a half volts, it should be okay. So multimeter checked out. So I grabbed um, a, battery, a battery booster, still wasn't working. So I was like, okay, this, this, is, not, this is not normal. There's voltage on the battery <clears throat> and the battery booster is not working, then there's gotta be something else going on. So sometimes I know that if a crank position sensor goes bad in these things, that it won't allow it to start either. So what I did was I put my OBD2 reader on it, which has an indicator light to tell me that it's powered up, but there was no light on. So I was like, okay, that's strange. Why, why is it that my OBD2 port has no power and the car's not cranking? So I went back to all data to see if there was a wiring diagram for the under dash diagnostic port and there was. And the under dash diagnostic port basically said that on pin 16, there should be 12 volts. Okay. So I went into the wiring diagram. This is what I, this is what I pulled up and pin 16 is all the way down here in the bottom. So there should be 12 volts on that. Okay. There's not. So looked at the schematic and I can see pin 16 here, which runs up and across, goes all across the engine NAO3 schematic. So I pull up that schematic, engine NAO3, and that pin 16 comes up off L. So I look at here, I go to L. So now I'm following L across, which branches off to a whole bunch of stuff. But what I notice is that it branches across to here, comes up to here, but it comes to pin two. And pin two comes to this fuse, SBF5, which is in your under hood fuse box. And it's this one right here. <clears throat> so pop the fuse, fuse is good. Check your voltage, voltage is good. So I'm like, okay, what's going on? So this is where I started chasing my tail, because when you look at this, that particular wire off pin two feeds your oxygen sensor, it feeds your main relay, it feeds the electronic throttle control relay, and it also feeds a few other things. And so I was like, okay, so now I'm confused. Why do I not have power? So started chasing down things and, you know, checking wiring. 
So I went over to the passenger side and again, down here in this bottom side, if you're ever wondering, that's the ECU under the carpet. And this here is bolted up, up in there. And this is your fuel pump, oxygen sensor, and one other relay in there, which I can't remember. So based off the wiring diagrams, I found that there was no power there. So I was like, well, that doesn't make any sense. So none of the things that should have power off that number two wire have it. So where I got confused now was I had to find where F44 was. Again, <laughs> I looked at the diagram and it said it was in that area again. Luckily, I found it, and it's literally right beside where the F44 connector is. F44 connector is, again, in that same area, and if you are looking at your clutch pedal, you look up directly to the top, up and to the left, and you'll see the 24 and the 8-pin connectors, and that's as simple as where that connector is. And so, grab my multimeter, I checked number 2 pin, 12 volts. Okay, well, 12 volts should be enough for the system to run. So I looked to see what other ones shared that. SBF5 comes down, comes down to 2 and 8. Well, I checked 8, and 8 had 12.4 volts. Okay, well, 0.4 volt difference shouldn't matter. So what I ended up doing is I then came into the car since I ran around aimlessly checking wires and looking at everything, going, what is going on? So then I grabbed that connector, which is right there, that connector, and I ran a jumper between eight and two, and now two showed 12.4 volts, eight showed 12.4 volts, and when I plugged it in, it worked. And right now, if I plug this connector in, And I grab my key, you'll hear everything. The ding. Dash lights are on. Stereo power is up. But if you listen, you'll hear the cooling fan is on. Now, Now, I don't understand the correlation between why all of that is happening and why the fan is on, but my what I can figure out or what I understand is because the ECU is not getting proper power because the wire on the, the line on number two is low and doesn't provide enough load to the car, that the ECU is not getting enough and not seeing enough, and neither is the fuse box. So the car is kind of going into a weird like freak out. So at that point, once I got the jumper in, I was able to get the car started, ran perfectly fine, no issues, and got into the shop. And that's basically where it sat because too cold and I was just so frustrated because for no apparent reason it quit working. Now, one of the arguments or one of the questions that I see a lot on about Subarus or cars in general is, should I run my inner fenders? And if you look, this car does not have them installed. And I think this could be possibly a reason why this happened. It melts and it freezes a lot here. So this car gets a lot of dirt and debris kicked up and that dirt and debris can actually end up inside the engine bay. So basically where I'm at today is I'm trying to figure out where the issue is with the line and why it's only it only works if I jumper it and why it's not providing enough power to that pin so that it can provide power to the car properly. So because troubleshooting can take so long and so much back and forth, I'm gonna figure out what this issue is. Once I figure... Check for 12 volt. bolt on the fuse side so we can put that back in 
Now, we're going to go check pin 28 or pin 2 under the card. If you remember, last time we were in here, 